prepared? Do you think LaShawn's going to be the step up in his place? LaShawn will be prepared. I'm not worried about LaShawn. He'll, he'll step up and he'll do a good job. Uh, obviously, don't like losing Malcolm. Don't like losing anybody ever. You know, it's just it's always tough when you lose a starter. It's even tough when you lose a backup. You just uh, you need everybody all the time. But that's the nature of this business. It's never going to change. It's hasn't changed in all the years I've been around here. I mean, you always end up losing some starters and. Uh, backup guys got to step in there, and I feel very confident with LaShawn. Are there things LaShawn maybe takes out of the Tampa game that will help him here? Sure. I think any, you know, anytime just getting in the game and, and having some experience and playing in the game, you know, is always a good thing. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would agree with that. I think he, he'll, you know, just having played in that game will help him play in this it game. It wasn't the smoothest or, or it. Numerically, it wasn't the most effective performance, not just him, but on Evans, generally speaking, you guys. On Evans, you mean clear back to Tampa Bay? I'm sorry? Yeah, I thought you said last week. No, in the Tampa Bay game. Oh, when, when he played in Tampa Bay? Uh, yeah, it's totally different different type of receivers, though. Um, you know, you really can't compare those. I don't think you can compare those two. It, it was different with – it was even different game plan and calls and stuff. So I, I just don't think – I wouldn't compare what happened in Tampa Bay to what can happen in Kansas City. I wouldn't. Have you gotten any sleep preparing for this uh, this offense, or what stands out? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it reminds me of going out in the backyard and playing when you were a kid, and you get some guy out there who just can throw it all over the lot, and you never know what's going to happen. And he's an exciting, dynamic player. I mean, that guy's a heck of a quarterback. He's. Uh, um, I mean, you know, the thing that I, I look and watch them, even before we were really kind of preparing for them and you just kind of watched them when they played somebody else's, you know, they look like a group that's having fun on offense. You know, they just go out and they could play. I see number 10 going in motion and skipping. And, I mean, it's like, hey, we're just out here. We're having fun. We're playing football and doing what we want to do. And it's kind of, you know, hey, it's, it's actually uh, fun preparing for them. It is. It's it's a big challenge, and sometimes the more the challenge, the more excited you get as a coach to prepare for things like that. And especially, so, you know, they got a, they got a lot, a lot, a lot of weapons. I mean, a lot, and they are a very fast, fast football team. So, uh, but I think it, it's it's fun getting ready for them. It really is. Do you, do you have to go in expecting Mahomes not to have any limitations? Oh yeah. I, you know, look, the way I would look at it is, you know, they're having a good year. They're a good, very good football team. Um, they're looking ahead to the future and this whole season and getting to the playoffs and doing all those things. And, and I would expect that they're not going to put him into a situation that would ever be in harm's way. I mean, they got a lot to look forward to, like we all do. And so, uh, and you know what, he is who he is. You can't just all of a sudden tell a guy that's used to doing all this stuff, going there and, hey, don't do that. It's it's a natural instinct. You can just tell the way he plays. You know, It'd be like Tom Brady to go in and play the wishbone. I don't think that would happen. So it, they are who they are. Um, I don't think they would play him if they had any reservations about him being able to run or move around. What, what, what uh, I guess when you prepare against Mahomes, I mean, he makes the no-look passes, he keeps plays alive with his feet, he can throw it 65 yards down the field. I mean, as a, as a guy that plays in the secondary, what do you what do you preach to him this week? You just got to be disappointed. You know what this is? This is a, uh, going back to college, and I told him the very first day, this is assignment football on defense. It's assignment football. You know, when you play like a, a, um, a uh, I mean, I'm dating myself and stuff, but wishbone team or you play a wing T team back in the day, you had to play assignments. I mean, you could not just go back there and just uh, hope that this was going to happen or play this. You, you had to play assignment football. You got to be where you got to be. And if it's a front, you got to be in the gap you got to be in. If you're in a zone coverage, you got to be in the zone you got to be in. If you're in man coverage, you better keep your eyes on your luggage and, and stay with him. And so to me, this was a, a – Defensively, this is an assignment football game for us on defense. Is there anybody else in the league that does anything you know, close to that? Are they, they unique in their approach? Uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, talent-wise, I mean, 
our man down there in Texas, you know, in Texas and Houston's pretty pretty good quarterback to move around to and get and cause headaches and do impromptu things. That that's the stuff that probably is the hardest thing. Is just uh, you know how do you, how do you I can't tell you if he's how do you practice looking one way and throwing the other? You know how do you practice some guy throwing left-handed? I mean I, I you know that's just the stuff that's what I'm saying. You just got to be where you got to be. And that stuff, you, you can't practice that stuff. You just got to be, you just got to do a, your assignments. You got to be able to handle the motions, the shifts, all that kind of stuff, which we do every week. But then when you got a quarterback that's more elusive, it, it becomes even more of a challenge. How, how you describe your mood on game day? Like a lot of times we'll catch you sitting up in the box, the, the, the cameras will catch you. Do you keep a pretty even keel most of the time? Do you get upset or how, how do you? Well, if I see a 40-yard run, I get real upset. (laughs) You know, we just, uh, like I say, the the only thing that just bothers me right now, the only thing that really does upset me is, you know, when we give up a big play that we don't need to give up, sometimes they, hey, the guy throws a pass in cover two or something else, and it's we're right there close, but we just don't get it, or the guy makes a great catch. That that really kind of doesn't bother me. I've coached long enough and coached in the secondary long enough that, those things don't bother me. If we have a missed assignment, you know, it bothers me. But at the same time, it's over with and it's done. As a coach, i got to move on and uh, call the next play. Because if I let that bother me, then it's going to bother me on the next play. Then that's not fair to the team. You don't break a pencil or tear a sheet of paper or anything well, like that? Well, I'm not saying that's never happened, <laughs> yeah, Jim. But I'm just saying, I, you know, you really just you got to learn over the years that uh, – uh, you're not you're not helping anybody by by doing that. You know, I might do it after the series, after you know they're on we're on offense. But um, you know, I, I hope that over the years that I've matured to where I can kind of just let it go and get on to the next play. Their RBs don't get a lot of attention. Obviously, McCoy's have been there, done that kind of guy. How dangerous are they? Well, they're dangerous because there's more than one of them. Right. You know, they all can they all can catch the ball. They can all do those things. Played against McCoy a lot over a lot of years you know they're by committee they're they're really uh they all are good they're all good and and uh i think sometimes they're kind of overlooked because of all the other speed guys on the outside and kelsey and and the quarterback and all that kind of stuff but they they got excellent running backs